Oh, I have to get out of your way. I'm so sorry. Good morning and welcome to the first chef demonstration of today. We're going to have six chefs working with incredible produce today. And we're starting off with Jot Althuizen, um, barbecue master. Yep. We all know him from his barbecue catering company, restaurant, cookbooks, television. Um, I think for most Dutch people, you're yeah, you're our barbecue master. Yes, yes. yes. I've, so I've slowly progressed into that uh, position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Well, you actually brought a barbecue with you as well today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They but asked me to do the demo, and I said, I know it's going to be indoors, but I will never go anywhere without my trusted charcoal. So, yeah. Yeah. Would be, will be great to, to see what you're going to do with it today. Um, today, we have slow cooked pork belly, different preparation of pineapple, which are sponsored by Cool Fresh. Um, and some sweet potato rusties, which I'm. Uh, yeah, you're you're the king yeah, of rusties. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in charge decided, of the right? rusties today. Can you tell us more about what you're going to be cooking today? Sure, of course. So for the um, the challenge for me today was that I was hooked up with fresh uh, produce, and they um, or the cool best, and they gave they gave me an assignment. They said, okay, let's. We're proud to feature pineapple. Can you yeah. work with pineapple? And I said, absolutely. And if you look into the spectrum of barbecuing, yeah, pineapple is always kind of like the outcast for dessert. Yeah. People always associate grilled pineapple and dessert. And I thought it would be interesting today to showcase that pineapple lends itself perfectly for using as, a, a, you know, as an ingredient for a main course. And for me, it makes perfect sense to use pineapple in a dish. Why? It's sweet, but it's also quite acidic. It's high yeah. in you know, a little bit of uh, sourness. And if you barbecue, it's a lot of focus on meat. And if, mm -hmm. let's be honest, it's not always the leanest of meats, okay? No, no, So no. it's like a big a fat steak, or yeah. if you work with pork, especially if you go into the low, slow smoking of meats, it's always a bit fatty. Yeah, you do need and that. to for offset that protein. fat in yeah. your mouth, it's great to use products that have a bit of acidity into it, or heat. And yeah. that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to use the pineapple in various uh, ways. So obviously, we're going to be doing some uh, grilled pineapple, which you see going on right here. This uh, is the classical uh, grilled pineapple yeah. I recognize yeah. from the desserts. Yeah. It's always nice that if you use a certain ingredient in a dish where you do various preparations, just also show it as is. You know, so it's yeah. just going to add some body to the dish, and it's going to um, also implement a bit of the structure. This one will showcase the sweetness of the pineapple, and by grilling it, we're actually going to accentuate that because grilling kind of boosts, it caramelizes the sugars inside of the yeah. pineapple, and that's really going to pop out in the flavor. So, so that's, that's one that's way. That's why it's used that's in desserts, probably, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So we got grilled pineapple. Then the second way, we made some chips. It's very easy. Just thinly slice it and then slow roast it in the oven oh, really at 80 thin. degrees for yeah. four hours. And yeah. basically what happens is the natural sugars inside, they start caramelizing without coloring. So it hardens, yeah. but it doesn't give that brown color. So that's a little crispy accent. And then I like a little bit of spice, all right? Mm -hmm. So and if I say a little bit of spice, I'll be honest, I like a lot of spice. <laughs> I see it there, yeah. And we made a, a hot sauce for the uh, Black Smoke restaurant, and I started using various peppers. So we have habanero. Yeah. We have yellow scorpion. It's a vile name, but it's also a very mm -hmm. vile pepper. That's why I'm using my gloves. And yeah. Madame Jeanette. And Where I'm just are they gonna... from? Well, you they're from it? various areas, okay? So the yellow scorpion actually comes from Africa. Madame Jeanette and habanero are more of a tropical kind of pepper. Yeah. I mean, they're all grown here in Holland too, I'm sure, but... That's where they originate from. Mm -hmm. Because you have uh, in the Westland, that's the area where yeah, I'm yeah. from, there's actually a lot of pepper growers. So we, uh, we have a lot of, yeah, we can get our hands on a great uh, variety of peppers. Yeah, and you get local, locally grown yeah. peppers. So basically to make a hot sauce, it's very easy, okay? So what we're gonna, we need a few things, all right. First of all, I need electricity on this baby. Oh, no. It's okay. We've been switching it around a little bit here and there. <laughs> Is that yours or is that mine? Uh, I think this one's mine. Okay, well, you're back on track. Where's mine? Oh, no, now I'm not on track anymore. I was. All right, here we go. Okay. Waarom heb ik nou geen stroom? Okay, this is één. It's great, you also, you, already <laughs> you also brought a barbecue then. Oh, yeah, yeah, that no never lets me down. No electricity needed for barbecues. <laughs> okay, but where is he? Heeft de gozer dat er in uitgegaan? There we go. You should yeah. be online too now. Nah, I'm not. There's nothing happening here. It's still hot though, but... Well, maybe you can ask the guys in the scene behind me why there is no electricity anymore. Yeah, I'll check. Yeah. There we go. See, me and electricity. There we go. Uh, perfect. You're back on track. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. 
There we go. We're good to go. So basically, to make a hot sauce, you need a, f a couple of products to add some body to the sauce. And obviously, we're going to start off with some peppers. We're just going to add a knob of butter yeah. in the pan. There we go. And I'm not looking into really frying it, so I don't need any, a lot of color on it. So I can crank up the heat, and I can immediately start adding a lot of the ingredients, because basically what I just want to do, soften them up, release the flavors. To get a nicer color balance in the sauce eventually, I'm also going to mm. add some uh, carrots. Yeah. There's a lot of really nice and fresh colors in here. Yep. Yeah. And then I believe in layering. To make a product taste interesting like a sauce, you need to layer it with flavors. Okay? And what so do the you peppers, mean with layering? Well, if you, if you take a bite and if it's in your mouth, you want to not oh, just have one flavor and it's, that's it. You know, so. for my rusties. I cannot oh, be a rusty already... queen without having my plate to put them on. Here Perfect. We go. Thanks. Here we go. Sorry, layering. That's all right. Layering. So we got we got heat. All right. This heat in this sauce, <laughs> I can already feel it here. <laughs> it's gonna come at you, okay? But it's yeah. gonna be a slow creeper. So you at actually first, feel the heat of the peppers. First, you're gonna <gasps> taste the sweetness of the pineapple. You're gonna taste sweetness of a mango juice that's gonna be in there. And then, in a later stage, the heat's gonna crop, cr uh, crawl up on you. Yeah. Now, once that dissipates, once that moves away from your mouth. You want to have something lingering. And what I do is I'm going to add some spice to it, some cinnamon, star anise, some pimento. That's mm -hmm. Jamaican uh, wonder paper, I just learned. That's how they call it in yeah? Africa, wonder paper. Wonder? Wonder, wonder paper. Well, that's funny. Oh, uh. Do you know why? Oh, I, I, I mean, they got crazy names for everything in Africa. Uh. <laughs> Elevator is called a heiser. So oh, you mean South, Southern Africa? South Africa, yep. Yeah. So I got the peppers in, I got carrots in. <coughs> You are feeling some, uh, the heat, aren't you? Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> really uh, getting into my uh, vocals. So, adding There's some, some mango. There's some water for you over there. Yeah, thanks. Add some mango to it. And what does the mango add to it, flavor-wise or texture-wise? I need, I mean, I don't want this sauce to be too thin. I don't want it to be running off the plate. Yeah. So I'm looking for things to give it body. So the <coughs> spicy it's going to be. <laughs> so the peppers. And the mango and the pineapple are going to give it body. They're yeah. going to give it structure to the sauce. Because we're going to be ending up, we're going to puree it. And then it's going to be a nice consistency. So we added mango. Obviously, there's ha there has to be pineapple in. Mm -hmm. And there we go. Did you do anything with the pineapple before no, you put it in? No, no. Just cubed it up. And there's a little bit of the natural juices in there, too. Mm -hmm. Going to crank it up a little bit. It's always good if you're using hot sauces to add a little bit of vinegar to it. Just gonna help it crisp up a little bit. And there we go. A little bit of sugar yeah. to offset the heat. And sugar is gonna give it a little bit more of that syrupy. Oh, also texture. Uh, texture, yeah. yeah. You got, whenever you compose a dish, you always wanna you know, think about structures and flavors. Yeah. And things need to be contrasting, okay? so. What we're going to be doing in a few seconds is we're going to be grilling that pork belly. Yeah. So that's a, that's a bit of a bold flavor. All mm -hmm. right. Then we're, uh, we have that sauce, and then we have the chips, and then we have the rusty. So we have the rusty is crunchy and creamy. We have the, the pork. We have the sauce. So the structures are there. Yeah. And then when you look at flavor profiles, we're going to have the freshness and the acidity of the sauce yeah. and the pepperiness. We're going to have the fattiness and the smokiness from mm -hmm. the smoked pork. We're going to have the sweetness from the uh, pineapple. Yeah, from the grilled pineapple, yeah. From the grilled pineapple. So it, it, there's all these different things happening on your plate. Yeah, great. See, you can see now, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, <laughs> but all the sugars have dissolved. Yeah, they're gone, yeah. They're gone. So now we're just gonna basically further use it to soften yeah. things up. I it does smell great though, yeah. A little bit more pineapple juice. It now we're just basically gonna let this simmer. It already smells spicy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The great thing is when I'm cooking these type of things in the kitchen, we always have uh, wait staff walking around. Yeah. They're always curious. Yeah. They always want to know. And, and that's a great, I mean, that's great. I mean, rather have staff that's interested in what you're cooking. Yeah, yeah, of course. Than uh, staff that doesn't care. But as chefs, we always like to, as we call it, dick around a little bit. Uh -huh. oh, so I was, I was yeah, cooking yeah. a big batch of 100 kilos of this sauce mm -hmm. for bottling. And then all the, all the time, the, the guys are coming into the kitchen. They're like, what are you making? What are you making? I don't want to taste everything. I don't want to taste it. So I said, like, oh, here's some mango puree. And I oh gave them the spoonful. Oh, my God, no. Steam was coming out of their, uh, their ears. So. Do they still like you now? Yeah. 
Okay, great. <laughs> I've worked in restaurants all my life, so I know these jokes, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is a bit too hot. This oh, that's is all right, not that's good. all right. Okay, a little bit of salt pepper, always important. We're just going to let this Th simmer. You should check this. I think this is maybe a bit too far. That's all right. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, the important thing is to remember that I just used a lot of peppers on that plate. So... Oh, on the... Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's one for you. And do you notice a difference if you're um, looking at fresh products such as pineapples? Because I've got... I've, for me, I've got the idea that it's sort of a hype now to use pineapples. You see fresh pineapples everywhere. There's even, it's even like a fashion statement nowadays. Yeah, Whereas yeah. Well, if I look back at 10 years ago, I remember pineapples coming from a, t from a can. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's Is there a... a difference? Well, there's, a, there's a, an overall revolution going on in the way we perceive food and we look at things. And thankfully, even the, you know, the Dutch consumers are becoming a lot more critical about what they eat. And it's necessary because we've come from, we had to come from far and uh, make sure that we uh, mm -hmm. you know, use more fresh products, cook healthier. And for me, I mean, I've just written two books. One was American style barbecue and the second one mm -hmm. was Latin style. And what I noticed as well is that in that Latin style, in American style, flavors came from th thick sauces and spices. Yeah? yeah. And in the second book, I was able to use a lot more fresh products. So fresh herbs, fresh things like mango, pineapple, to build flavors mm -hmm. and to push a dish into a certain direction. And I think you'll see that here in the supermarkets too, and the way we, we do our groceries and the way we cook yeah. is that we're tired of convenience, and finally we're spending a little bit more time in the kitchen doing what we should be doing, and that's cooking a great meal. And availability of these fresh products, has anything changed there? No, I mean, we've been blessed with, um, you know, able to buy our groceries annually. I think seasonality should be even more pushed, even in supermarkets, because we find it very normal that year-round products are available. Yeah. But it would be nice if we, you know, as a consumer, would be a little bit more aware as to what products in season. And, yeah. Um, so, I mean, we're, we're making a lot, lot of progress, but yeah. we can still... You know, make some steps, yeah. I think. Great. And that's gr great with these kind of dishes as well, probably, because you can, like, all the different texture combinations and flavor combinations, you can get it from different types of fruits as well, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Different of products and... And the thing is... I mean, I'm specialized in barbecue. Everything I do yeah. is evolving around cooking on fire. And what I've, I mean, if you look at barbecue about 10 years ago in the Netherlands, it always had to do about things that needed to be quick, 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 quick. So we would yeah, get like this pre-marinated pre package from the supermarket. Yeah. We would get all sorts of things that are, were done grilled, you know, quickly, pre-marinated, thin slices, quick, quick and ready. Now, yeah, this barbecuing was heating up, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, this pork belly, for instance, has been on the smoker for six hours. Oh, wow. And what you see now is there's a growing trend towards people really saying, hey, this weekend I'm going to cook. And, it's a and I'm allowing myself to just do that. Mm -hmm. So cooking itself has become a leisure activity. Mm. So you already cooked this for six hours. And are you going to put it on the barbecue for yeah. to heat it up and add Bas texture? Basically, or? by slow roasting it, by slow smoking it, um, what we do is we, we create tenderness. Because pork belly... You know, the speck lapjes is also the same cut, but because yeah. it's uh, made from, um, it's it's just grilled over high heat. You're missing a lot. You're missing out on the tenderness. Yeah. And then, all right. You see, sometimes talking and cooking isn't the greatest yeah, combo. Yeah. But the um, <laughs> so by slow smoking that pork belly, you give the fattiness time to render out. Yeah. The meat parts they stay tender and moist. Now, when we shortly grill it. You're going to get a moist and soft interior of the meat and a crispy outside. Yeah. So that's actually a perfect combination. It looks really tender. It almost looked like it's cooked or something. You know, like yeah, yeah. really soft. And then pink. the seasoning that we have around is uh, we call it our Hawaiian rub. Yeah. So normally a lot of uh, barbecue spice mixtures are based around paprika powder. So they're red. And the reason is that it helps to give that mahogany red browned look when it's cooked. Now we've 
thought let's change things up a little bit. Yeah. So we uh, build one with turmeric as a base. Yeah. So there's salt in there, there's turmeric in there, a uh, bunch of other spices and sauces, the first spices. Obviously there's always a little bit of the garlic, a little bit of mm -hmm. onion powder, but it kind of gives this more of like a golden look yeah. and the flavor is different. So That's the color theme of today anyway, right? Yeah. <laughs> Everything sort of yellow, gold and orange. Perfect. The Russies are coming along as well. Yeah. Taking a peek here. I'm going to start squeezing out final flavors here. And then we're going to blend this. Yeah, you put the oranges in with peel and everything. Does it add bitterness as well? Yeah, or? yeah absolutely. So the skin of the orange actually contains a lot of oils. Yeah. yeah. And that's why if you look into the cocktail scene, what they'll do is they'll take this thin peeler and then they take off a little twist of the... Uh, like a little zest yeah and then they, they'll squeeze it out over your glass of the cocktail and basically what they're trying to do is just extract those oils that contain the most flavors mm. all right so let me make sure that i'm just pulling out mine and not yours <laughs> yeah that'd that, be great <laughs> here we go second lesson i learned I think always I blend lost. in a high container you lost your power I lost power yeah I mean, this is not your average kitchen, but we'll we manage. Go. You're back online. Yeah, I am. Thanks. So by blending the sauce and really pureeing the pineapple, the mango, the peppers, you start seeing it coming together and binding. So with the sugar from the fruits, sugar fr that you added. Yep. <laughs> this is by by all means a very spicy sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Be warned. <laughs> I'll just do a little dip. I once had a complaint that one of my hot sauces wasn't hot enough. So oh, really? This is my reaction to Proving that. Proving them wrong. <laughs> Here we go. I generally fork you a little. I need to find a little bit. Okay. Fuck that. All right. How's yep. the mango sauce? <laughs> That's going to wake up some people. <laughs> yeah. Probably not make a joke with this sauce. <laughs> like I said, I'll do a little dab. But the thing is, I'm just tasting it pure as is right now. But you're going to have to taste it in combination with the fattiness of the pork and the sugars from the pineapple. Yeah. And that's really going to help out. Yeah, because sugar and heatness also work together, right? Yep. I think that uh, the sugar sort of... Uh, masks the heat that you feel after eating something really spicy. Well, the thing is, you should see something that's as fatty as pork. I always, you know, I, I used to do the dishes when we go camping and you have that little bucket with soapy water. Yeah. And then once you've done the, especially when you've barbecued on the campsite, that water has a layer of fat on top. Yeah. Then if you squeeze your, your uh, laundry, like your detergent, your yeah. soap, then you see that taking away. Yeah. So that's also what happens when you eat something as fatty as pork. There's a layer of fat kind of covering your taste buds, and the pepper texture. is going to yeah. open it up again. There we go. Time to put the pork on, and then we can start assembling our dishes.
So the pork has already been cooked, so it only needs to be the, be on the barbecue. We just for we just need to heat it up well. or yeah. crisp it up. You can, as you want to say it, maybe. There we go. Mm -hmm. Let's create some space so we can start cleaning up our dishes. Do you want to put these rusties in the oven to Yeah, just keep them warm. Them or not? Yep, keep them warm. We'll heat them up a little bit further. So the trick with these potato rusties is that we've pre-baked the potatoes, so they're pretty much already cooked. Yeah. All right. So we're going to turn up your heat a little bit. And for today, you thought of a dish that has fruit in it as well, like a, that's another dessert, like you talked about. Uh -huh. Do you do that more often? Yeah, basically what we, 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 I love as a chef, I love being challenged by somebody who says like, hey, we're, we're focusing on this product, can you, can you help us out? Can you come up with a creative recipe? Um, because as a chef, you always need to look for new sources of inspiration. Huh? Yeah. And then especially if you want to create a new dish, you really want to make sure that you steer clear for something that somebody else already has done. So mm -hmm. I am fortunate, I get to travel a lot for yeah. the barbecue books that I write. So I get my sources of inspiration from far away. And then when I return, then I'm, not all ingredients from far away are available here. So you have to be creative in a sense that mm -hmm. you... You have to experiment um, with Yeah, you have to flavors. experiment a little bit. Like for instance, in Peru, they have a pepper called aji. Yeah. And it's not available here. What so, kind of pepper but it's is a it? it's a type of pepper that is more it more has a floral aroma than it really adds a lot of spice. Mm. So you have to look for something that's available here in the Netherlands that has that same characteristic. Yeah. And luckily, that's not hard to find. It isn't. No. Oh, good to hear. I mean, jalapeno peppers are a bit more spicy still, a bit more pungent. Yeah. But here we go. Yeah, then you can just use a little less or combine it with something else, right? Or, yeah, to build the flavor that you want. No fire alarm has gone off, right? So, <laughs> not yet. That's kind of my trade signal. I think signal. we're fine. I think we shouldn't have tried cooking them for six hours. Uh, no. But this is going to be fine. Normally, I haven't been in the house if the alarm hasn't gone off, so. <laughs> And what other fruits or vegetables are, uh, like tropical fruits and vegetables are fine on a barbecue? Well, we anything, anything that has a natural sweetness. I mean, I think another stigmatized product is banana. Yeah. A lot of bananas are, there's this typical thing. I mean, when, when I talk to people about barbecue, they always like to share their favorite recipes. And it's always like, yeah, what I do is I take this banana and I, I open it up and then I put some chocolate in and yeah. rum and then I, I brown sugar and then I roast it. I'm like, yeah, okay. That's great, but can you try to see if can you do different things with the banana? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you if you look at the the other traditions, it's a plantain. Huh? It's a bit more yeah, yeah. of a savory type of banana, and then you try to add sweetness to that, and then you can use it in a savory dish. Um, or I've made it uh, once. I've made a very funky uh, banana ketchup. You know, banana so it's, ketchup. Yeah, wow. So it, it's a different way of using products. That it, it's a recognizable product. Everybody knows banana. Everybody knows pineapple. Yeah. But um, you got to do it with an element of surprise. You want to, you want to say to people like, "Hey, you know, you can also do it this way." Um, should I put these in the oven, or do you want to have them on the plate? Um, because I think these are. These are nearly cooked. Yeah. Let's keep those in a pan for now. I'm gonna pull the ones out of the oven, and yeah. then. We don't I'll have an oven. Off, we don't have an oven mitt, do we? Nope, we don't. That's why I asked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if I can pull it out of the oven. <laughs> I think All not right. putting it in the oven was the best answer you could give me. All right. I've turned off the heat for this one though, so it's not gonna burn. A lot of fruits that you mentioned for on a barbecue, they're all pretty sweet. Like banana, pineapple. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's the thing with uh, fruit. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like if sweet. I think of, I mean, of instance, course, of course, you can do, you can do the same fruit. thing with a lot of vegetables. Right? I mean, give me a raw onion and I'm very unhappy. But if you give me the, the whole onion, yeah. and I just take the whole onion, and what I do is I just I just put them in between the coals. 
yeah. you know, with the skin on, and I just let it sit there until you start seeing that the inside of the, the onion starts to bloom out. It's pushed out because it's cooking and it expands. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, that sharp, pungent onion becomes incredibly sweet. Sweet, yeah. And it's that is the thing with fire roasting, fire cooking. Um, you can you can really accentuate natural sweetness in products, even as sharp as onions. Mm. There we go. All right. Let's take on the challenge of getting that out of the oven. Watch out. Yep. Sorry. As long as there's paper, there's a rescue. And uh, blame me for the little black bits on there. That's oh, <laughs> all right. That's all right. They say women can do two things at once, but I just proved not that good at that. There we go. So these are the sweet potatoes. What we've done is we pre-bake them to kind of pre-cook them to give it a little bit more speed now also in the, in the baking of things. go there we go mm -hmm. did I have two more plates there we go oops let's not forget this is probably that's still a bit mildly hot, hot. should I that's yeah, all right yeah. Yeah, there's been a lot of uh, pre-cooking involved today for the for the pork of course and yeah. uh, pre-cooking the sweet potatoes for all of you if you want to try this at home you can there's recipe cards on the table so you can just take those and if you've got six spare hours and 45 minutes to prepare it uh, feel free to take home the recipe cards and try some of this at home or just try one of the one of the one of the parts on the plate just try the pineapple sauce or just if you're, if you're into hot yeah. sauce, this recipe is really a killer. Yeah. Literally. Um, Looks great. There we go. Can I help you with something? No, we're no? good. We're okay. good. I'm fine just standing here. Ooh, look mm -hmm. at that one. Nice, nice grill marks on that one. There we go. This is going to be the savor, okay? So if your hot sauce is a little too spicy for you, just really yeah. take that pineapple in and you're good to go. I just had an incredible experience recently. And in Amsterdam here, there's a guy called Jay's Juices. Yeah. And he's been a, like, he presses wheatgrass shots and all that kind of stuff. And recently he discovered that if you just take um, the, what's it called? It just, ginger, sorry. Yeah. It's a very, very difficult name, ginger. If mm -hmm. you take ginger and you use that same process of just pressing out the juices, it becomes incredibly spicy, incredibly yeah, sharp. Yeah. And it really, it's like this natural Red Bull. You just take the shot and you're like, whoa. Yeah, but I've it's heard so spicy that, yeah. that it really burns your throat. So what he does then, as you're standing there gasping for air, literally. He, he does just, let he you just do that first. You, he just gives you a slice of pineapple. And then immediately soothes, soothes, just soothes your throat. Yeah, it really helps you calm down. Uh, so. Pineapple, yeah. It Here is funny go. though that he first gives you the raw shot. <laughs> Let you die uh, a little and then hand out the solution. Uh, it's the same, the same humor as I have, I guess. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So basically, we're going to be putting on that sauce, then some pineapple chips, and uh, like I said, I'm really going to be gentle with you guys because, boy, is this pungent. Mm -hmm. It is looking really nice, really nice and fresh. All the colors. Well, that's a great thing with cooking with fresh products like pineapple and other fruits and vegetables, meat, meat is just meat, you know, and it's, yeah. it, you can get it perfectly brown and it will look appetizing and appealing, but you really need to bring out color with your side dishes. And yeah. then that really is going to, you know, set your dish apart and it's going to make it pop, you know, both in color and taste. So that's great. That's a great thing with cooking with things like this.
could have had an eyedropper for this sauce. That's how. Pungent. You're really sparing us by only adding a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just want to. <laughs> I want to have. You, I want you to have the experience, but I really don't want to burn anybody here. So, okay. So here's the uh, oven dried mango flakes, just to add a little bit of a funky texture to the dish. They are sliced really thinly. Yeah, and just as thin as you can. I mean, obviously, we're using a kitchen uh, slicer or yeah. deli slicer. And then... But you so can do this at home, though, with yeah, a knife. Yeah. Just There's a thing really that's called mandolin. Oh, yeah, of course. That helps you to slice thinly. So, it's, it's funny how you discovered that you skipped a few. <laughs> there we go. All right. So... If I put the last flakes on, you want to start handing yeah, them course. out so have, uh, people have a taste experience. So, but you can still, what you can also do if you really want to make it pop, there's a lemon crust that you can add on top for it. I think it's also listed on the recipe, and that just gives it a little bit of green. But it's really going to offset against all the bright yellow colors. So I'll just take the first two. Yeah. Gentlemen, are you up for some slow smoked pork belly? There you go. I'm gonna get back to you and ask if you liked it, right? So I'll just give you a couple of minutes to enjoy. We got nice and forks here. Yeah. In sustainable Thanks. wood. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Come here we go. Sure. So it's not your ordinary you barbecue well? dish, which I hope you all enjoy. No. Would you like to taste? Yes. What do you think? Very, very good. Uh, that's, I think that's the best comment. Thank you.